shave the beard, but it's growing back. I had a party to go to, and I needed to wear a pencil-thin mustache for a party. Dedication, man. Dedication. So I just took it all off, but it'll be back. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And today we have a new entry in our budget mic series. This is the Samson Meteor USB microphone, and it's this one right here. The Samson USB Meteor is a, a cardioid-based microphone that is designed primarily to sit on a desk and to be like your VoIP microphone, your gaming microphone, and it's a nice low-profile desk-mounted microphone. The uh, pattern of this microphone is a cardioid pattern, which means there's a lobe of sensitivity in the front of this microphone, and it should reject noise that comes from behind it. But it does seem to be meant to be used primarily as a desktop microphone. There is an integrated, sorry for any handling noise, there's an integrated stand that's built right into the microphone. They're just these little flaps that fold down out, out of the microphone and it's just meant to just be sitting on your desk just like this. So this is the type of sound scenario you might expect to get from the microphone. The microphone itself does seem to want to be used at an arm's length. So this is probably yeah, 14, 18 inches from my mouth to the microphone. Uh, and so this is the kind of sound that you might experience. We'll also take it into the booth so you can actually hear the way the mic really sounds. Um, but this is the type of sound that you can expect. Before we go into the booth, a couple of things that you should know about this microphone. It starts with the USB cable in the back. So this is a mini USB plug, um, the kind that you might find in an old Blackberry or something like that. It's not the micro USB, it's the mini USB plug. And it also has on the back it has a headphone jack. So the headphone jack allows you to listen back to, it allows you to listen back as you're recording. So as I put on my headphones, I can hear what is happening in this microphone. On the front, there is, and I'm gonna turn this just for a second, there is a button and a knob. They're sort of coaxial. The button is a mute button. So as soon as you press the button, it turns amber, and that amber is a mic mute. So as I happens, nothing happens when the when it's muted. The coaxial knob to it is a volume knob, and that allows you to adjust the volume in your headphones. I'm going to turn it so you can hear me again. Um, it allows you to adjust the volume in your headphones. It does not adjust the gain of the microphone. It doesn't make the microphone itself louder or softer, softer. It just adjusts what you hear in your headphones. But it does allow for zero latency monitoring um, of your voice as you're recording. So I can hear myself with no delay in my headphones. So this is the first example of how this microphone sounds. I'm going to now take this over into the booth and let's see what the sound sounds like. Okay, so now we have the microphone here set up in the booth and I've got my headphones plugged in so I can listen to myself in real time as I record. Let's first talk about what you get in the box. So it comes in a, a nice little box. It's very simple. There's not much to it. Within the box, you get the microphone. You get a little velvet travely bag with the Samson logo on it. You get an owner's manual and you get a micro, uh, I'm sorry, mini USB cable. So you do get the appropriate cable to connect it. And that's pretty much it. Like I said before, it, it comes with an integrated, uh, an integrated microphone stand for your desk, but it is also threaded. Let me just hold this up here. It is also threaded so that you can attach it to your standard microphone stand. So you can uh, you can use it in a booth. You can use it on a boom arm, uh, a scissor arm. So if you wanted to have this uh, integrated into your desk without it just sitting there on the desk, that's totally doable. In the manual, it has some uh, recording tips for how to record all these different instruments. And it pretty much just says, 
put it in front of the source, whether that's your mouth or the piano or anything like that. It does talk a little bit about proximity effect and that as you get closer to the microphone, the bass in the voice can, or the bass in the source can get drawn out a bit more. So as you get closer and closer to the microphone, uh, it can get... Um, bassier uh, and that's for all instruments including your voice so voice actors we can sometimes leverage that effect and and bring out some additional bass in it i will say that as i looked at the uh the uh frequency response of the um of the microphone itself it does have as we've seen in many usb microphones it does have quite a presence boost so remember this is a logarithmic scale so this is the the lower 5000 hertz is that right yeah, the lower 5,000 hertz of frequency response. And this little hump here is the top 15,000 um, kilohertz. Uh, so from 5,000 to 20,000. And you can see that there is a pretty significant presence boost. And how high up does that? That is probably a 5 dB presence boost uh, in the in the upper range. So as we've seen in many uh, USB microphones, they do tend to be very uh, treble forward. Now, from 1,000 hertz down, we can see that there's a pretty steady roll-off of the bass, and that is what? Probably also about 5? Yeah, about 5 dB of bass roll-off from 1,000 and down. So that will thin out the sound of this mic, and that will actually reduce a little bit of the proximity effect uh, in the microphone itself. So as I get closer, I do get a little bit bassier, but it's not a huge amount of EQ change that you need to uh, concern yourself with. Weird things about this microphone is it does come with the integrated stand, which is cool. But when it's in the mount like this, you can't, you can't get, you can't, they're there. Now, you know, your first inclination might be to, well, just fold them up out of the way. And what I found when I was testing this the first time, because I thought that was the way it, it should have been. But as I folded up the petals of the stand. This reminds me of a flower. So these, I'm going to call these petals for lack of a better word. As I fold them up and put them in front, I find, now you listen along with me, I find that it, those petals get in front of the capsule and I actually think it changes the sound of the microphone for the worse. And that would make sense because now I'm blocking part of the capsule with these metal arms these or these legs of the stand. And I feel like it changes the EQ, and I don't think it changes it for the better. So I find that when I, would, when I wanted to record with this, I had to fold those pedals down. And you just sort of deal with the fact that they stick out like that. I've also got a competitor to this microphone. This is a Blue Yeti. And we're going to put these, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. The first thing is look at the size difference between these two microphones. The Yeti is a big a big honking microphone the meteor is actually quite compact it's one of the smaller usb microphones that i've encountered now the yeti is a different kind of microphone they are only sort of competitors the yeti is a stereo microphone which means you can have a left and right channel it can be an omnidirectional microphone it can be a figure eight microphone so this is a multi-pattern microphone whereas the uh, samson is just a cardioid pattern so it just is sensitive in the front the uh, yeti has many different patterns the uh, Meteor uh, is only controlled, you can control the gain only on the software side. So in your, like, either in Windows or OS X, in the sound application, you can change how sensitive this microphone is. Whereas the Yeti has a gain uh, sensitivity knob right on it. They both have mute buttons on the front. They um, both have headphone volumes on the front. They will both act as a sound card uh, so that you can listen back uh, in... Um, from your computer sound into the microphone. So in that, they're both USB interfaces, uh, but they do have some slightly different functionality. And you'll be able to compare the sound. I'll switch back and forth. You'll be able to hear the difference in sound between them. Right now, I have this Yeti set up as a cardioid pattern just to give an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Um, <clears throat> Pardon me. So there's the there's a sound comparison between these two you know, really popular competitive mics, the Samson Meteor and the, the USB uh, Blue Yeti. This is not a pro or black or any of this. It's just your, your plain old Yeti. Uh, let's see. What else can I say about this microphone? The, the thing that I find a little bit frustrating about the Meteor, and this is 
depends on how you're going to use it. If you're going to put it in something like a scissor mount, like I, I have a scissor mount for my, uh, my main microphone, a scissor mount like this that you can decouple the microphone from your desk, I think that's a very uh, wise idea, even though it's got this built-in stand that you can't close. And the reason I say that is this is a rigid stand. There's no shock mount whatsoever built into this microphone. And I don't know if you can get a shock mount for the Meteor. So hold on for a second. The thing I'm concerned about is the way the, the microphone with the stand is it wants to be like right near your keyboard, right? It wants to be within arm's length, but it's a rigid stand. So when you're typing on your keyboard, and I'm just giving it the very gentle typing, my WASD keys, my cursor keys, it's going to go right into the microphone, one, because there's, you know, it's right within the lobe of sensitivity. But if you're uh, uh, an aggressive typer, if you're if you're typing strong, I imagine you're hearing the pounding. It's going to sound like pounding of the keys right within the right within the microphone. That's very challenging. So you want to have something like a uh, you know a scissor mount that you can that you can bring it and decouple the uh, microphone from the uh, from the uh, from the desk. Now let's just see. So this is the kind of scenario that I'm talking about by having a scissor arm that's up out of the way. Sorry for any handling noise as I as I adjust it. I can put this directly in front of my directly in front of my mouth uh, my mouth, and then as I type on the keyboard. So you know, typing on the keyboard, as I type on the keyboard, hopefully I'm sure you're still hearing the sound of the keyboard itself, but we shouldn't hear any of the pounding. So even if I really, you know type aggressively you're still going to hear the keys but hopefully you're not getting that pounding that's in the microphone so a, a boom arm like this really inexpensive these are you know i think this is probably 10 or 15 bucks as i said before uh, that's the kind of scenario that i'm talking about so overall impressions about get this out of here we're done with this one so overall impressions with the samson meteor a tentative good a tentative good and that's because i still don't you know i'm not in love with usb microphones i still think that the usb sound itself because of the price of the componentry that's in it it's always going to be less satisfactory than a dedicated piece of hardware that's just a microphone and then just an interface that said i will say that at roughly half the price of the Yeti, the sound difference between the two isn't that significant. So if you're only going to use the cardioid pattern, then why get the, the, the Yeti mic, right? If you don't need that stereo capability, the figure eight, the omnidirectional, then you don't need to go there with that microphone and spend the extra money. I do think that this sounds better than the Snowball. I didn't have it for comparison today. Sorry about that. Um, but I do think that the, the sound is very much on par with the Yeti. It's a lot smaller, except for these stupid legs. Um, and I think the sound is comparable with a bit of EQ. Um, if you're going to be doing, you know, recording, I think with a bit of equalization, you can improve the sound a bit. But it does have that tinny USB sound. It's good it's not voiceover good you wouldn't i don't think you're going to book radio commercials with a meteor uh, but if you're doing like a podcast or something like that where sound quality isn't critical um then yeah i totally think that you could use something like a samson meteor if you get right in, nice and close to it without popping it if you get your gain set just right i think that there is a real opportunity here in this mic it's still a USB microphone. So when you want to upgrade your microphone and go to an XLR, you're still going to need to buy that interface. So there's that trade-off. There's, you know, in order to get down to 70 bucks for a microphone, they're having to cheap out a little bit on the componentry. You can hear it when I click the buttons and turn the knobs. It is, it has a, it has a, a plasticky feel. Even though the microphone itself, I think this is metal. I mean, it's got a, it's, it's a good solid, heavy feeling microphone. But that sound, that presence boost, it boost, it just, it doesn't sound great to me. It's not a smooth microphone. It's got a tinny metallic sound to it is just my impression of it uh, but if you're not going to be doing hypercritical 
recording, then yeah, get get this mic. I, I prefer it over the Yeti, uh, size wise, uh, functionality wise. It's got the stuff that I I need. I don't need that figure eight um, omnidirectional stuff. I wish it had a gain knob on it. Um, I really do like that about the Yeti. I do wish this had a gain knob on it. The headphone um, thing is nice. The little plosive indicator is nice. That that stuff is pretty good. But my overall impressions is is I give this a uh, for a USB. It's a great mic. For a USB mic, it's a great mic. I'm 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 pleased with it. Um, and this is not sponsored. This is you know me, my own money. I bought this to see how it would sound, to see if I could use it as a travel microphone. Maybe for auditions. Yeah, maybe. It just doesn't. You know, it's got that USB sound to it. It's just man. I wish it didn't. I wish it was a smoother microphone. Uh, but overall, so I'm going to give this like a thumb up and a and a half. I I, I don't know. Uh, but you take away from it how you think it sounds, if that's right for you. In my booth here, uh, you know, four inches off the mic, for me, this is as good as this mic can sound, given my constraints. I mean, you're in a several thousand dollar recording booth here. This is about as good as this is going to sound for, for my voice. And it's it falls just a little bit short of voiceover business. It's... Uh, falls well short uh but for your everyday recording uh for doing like your gaming channel and stuff like that um yeah then this could this microphone could definitely could definitely could definitely work um and you're gonna save you know 50 60 bucks over something like yeti um so i hope that helps i hope you've given it you know that you get the chance to evaluate the way it sounds um it's got some pros and cons and that's it Um, now go get yourself a mic usb or otherwise and get out there and record something amazing i'll talk to you next time